34, Kobe Bryant. Have a good time. Enjoy life. It's um, life is too short to, to, to get bogged down to be discouraged, or um, you have to keep moving. You have to keep going. Put one foot in front of the other. Smile and just keep on rolling. You know, and uh, that's that's what really is, this camp is about. You've had some really good games stringing them together. Now that you've got on a roll, we get toward midseason. You wake up. Is that pushing you toward changing your mind? To any degree, do you have those feelings too now? No, because it, it, my decision wasn't based on that. My decision was based on me, on the inside. Do I feel like doing this, yes or no? I don't want to do it anymore. Okay, I need some amplification on this whole hero-villain concept then that you have introduced. Well, I mean, I, I, the, the important thing for me is what can I leave going forward like if, if you're a kid at home and you're playing the game of basketball playing any sport um how can i do the things that i've learned throughout my career help him or her and the philosophy that i found myself living by is this hero villain idea and concept that we are both you not one or the other right right it, it's all perspective and what i've done throughout my career is i've taken really dark moments of isolation, of, of fear, of failure. I've taken those things and I've chosen to use those things. I've chosen to use those darker moments to try to create something greater. And I've heard during this farewell tour, people have asked you about the, the, the Shaq Kobe years, the Kobe Shaq years, and how many more championships you might have won had you stayed together. And I was taking a different view of that, which has sort of been, there was probably an expiration date on that group. And it was just time to go away and start something new. Which, which, where do you fall on that? I, we weren't going to play together again. You know, I think it's um, the challenge was issued. Right, wrong, and different. People saying, "Well, Kobe can't win without Shaq," and I'm looking at Shaq like, "Dude, you know, and I know that's not true." But he would never say that. <laughs> right? I said, "Okay, you know what? I'll show you. I'll show you." And so from that point, it was it became personal for me. I knew that, you know, winning the championship meant more to me than it did to everybody else. I treat this as life and death. I mean, come hell or high water, that's what I was gonna get done. Now that you've had some time to reflect as you go into the, the, the farewell tour and are doing this in every arena anyway, how do you want to be remembered? What, what matters to you in this whole discussion of, okay, Kobe's last year? What do you want people to think of? I've always said, that I wanted to be remembered as a player that didn't waste a moment, didn't waste a day. And uh, um, I felt extremely blessed um, by the God-given talent. But at the same time, I didn't take, take it for granted at all. And so if I could re be remembered as a person that was born with a lot of talent, but did everything he could to try to overachieve you know, that lived every day as if he was the 12th guy on the bench. You know, I think that's a very powerful message to have and something that hopefully the players that are now and players that will come later um, choose to embody as well.